And the main event of this show was the Inner Circle Celebration. And it's hosted by Eric Bischoff. And Jericho comes out, and the fans are singing Judas. And it's like a full crowd of fans singing this song, and it was so awesome. And they're basically doing a... You know you know that this started, we were there when this thing started, and it would have been, if the pandemic didn't hit, this would have been like huge at every arena. Because they, they'd only had like a couple weeks after the, the cruise before the pandemic hit, and they were starting, it was, it was just picking up momentum at the arenas. And it would have been like by, I would say by April or May, it would have been gigantic. And maybe, you know what, maybe it would have Well, by out. July or August, it's going to be gigantic again. It may burn out at some point, and maybe this actually lengthened it because people didn't get to do it so much. But it's going to be really, yeah, it's going to be really big when they go to um, all these new cities in July and in July and August. Um, it's going to be freaking, you know, that'll be big, and the Jungle Boy entrance will be big. And there might be others too. So basically, all of these guys got a chance to cut a promo and talk about their time in the inner circle, what it meant to them. And Jericho did this big deal about how, listen, I was hesitant to do this at first. I don't play well with others, but I looked at these guys and and uh, they're just like me. They don't give a damn about anything or anybody. They just want to put on great performances. We're going to do it at Stadium Stampede. And if we lose, we're going down in a blaze of glory. And then he tells everyone, I love you. And it's, they really, all... it's really interesting because the deal is, is instead of selling you on the idea they can't lose, the entire push of this was, you know what? This may be your last chance to see them because they may lose. I mean, they really pushed that there's a good chance that they're going to lose, which is interesting. Um, Santana did a great job in his promo, by the way. So they do the big hug, and then all of a sudden MGF appears on the big screen, and he's there with Dean Malenko, who they have beaten up, and he says, if you want to save this guy, get your ass into this football field right now. And so they all run up the stairs, and they start to run towards the field, but they get jumped on the way, and the heels beat the shit out of them, including hitting Santana. FTR hits Santana Ortiz with pile drivers off the whatever you would call the first level through yeah, two table. tables that looked so brutal they shot it from a long way away which actually made it look even worse because you just see these two bodies well, one, fall one, head one, first one, through the table one of them well one of them went through the table but the other one the table didn't break well uh, one way or the other they looked like they were dead and then uh of course they close the show with mgf saying when you're in the pinnacle you are always on top I mean, they're really pushing hard. Like this is it for the inner circle. Yep. I do and not think this is it for the inner circle. I don't. I don't either. But they really. That was the theme that they wanted to get across. And they, you know, I mean, that was there was no. I mean, no. You know, sometimes like um, they 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 will do things to put it in your head, but they don't do it strong enough. And I can't say that here. It was like they went in there, and their idea was is that our selling point is that this is your last chance to see the inner circle. So if you like them. You better buy the pay-per-view because there's a good chance it's the last time. Now, the problem is, is that nobody believes in stipulations. Um, maybe someday they will, but nobody does. So it's... Well, what you, know. you got to do is you have to do stipulations every now and then and adhere to them. Well, so and, far they've adhered to every single one. Yes, and, and over time, I mean, what's going to oh. happen over time is that if you're a fan of AEW, you will believe AEW stipulations and Nobody. you will continue to not believe WWE stipulations. In theory, but all I could tell you right now is nobody believes AEW stipulations because they've been taught for 20 years. you got to undo 20 years of teaching that it's all bullshit. And it's not so... It's like to people who were fans for like 40 years, they remember when it meant something. But for people who were fans for 20 years, it's always been bullshit. So yes, Dave, like, but when you say everybody, I mean, I would bet you good money that there are a lot of fans of AEW that do not believe that they will ever see Chris Daniels and Kazarian teaming up again. Perhaps, but that match didn't do shit. I mean, as far as it was a great match, but it didn't it didn't sell anything special because, again, no one... I mean, Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan didn't do well. You know, I mean, it's like... Nobody believes in this, and I don't know that they're ever going to because I'll give you an example right now, and the big one, of course, is, is Cody. And Cody, again, t yesterday, insisted that he is never challenging for the title, and all I hear are people is like, 
I want him to challenge for the title. Like, it's not even, it, they've, they've gotten to the point where it's not even that people don't trust him, but they think it's cool to break them. And when you have that, then they will never mean anything. You know, it's people like, why, why are they actually adhering? It's like, it's like now we've gotten the blowback where, why are they adhering to this? This isn't pro wrestling where you adhere to stipulations. That's not pro wrestling. It's like, it's the same thing of like with, they need more DQs. And it's like, fuck. It's like, because, I mean, if you grow up and you watch 20 different styles and you kind of go, this is the best one, or this, this is the best here, this is the best here, you pick your, the best of everything and then you try to meld it into, a, into a, what you're doing. But, now it's like a whole group of people who've only watched one thing and when you veer from it they think it's wrong so they're just sitting there going why are they doing this so it may take a long long time for these stipulations to um well that's like, fine i'm i'm I, I don't care about the people that are diehard wwe fans that don't like aw and don't understand their stipulations but these are a, these are aw fans that are saying this not well WWE these fans. aw fans within a few years they will buy the aw stipulations I've never heard a New Japan fan say they need to do more DQs. They just haven't done DQs forever. And some of those no, fans watch when they, WWE. When they, when they do them, they usually... Well, the DQs, they usually hate. The countouts, they actually like because they've done... New, new Nobody does countouts better than New Japan. I mean, it's like... It's not even to me like the New Japan countouts aren't even a gimmick finish. I mean, or a screw job to me because they're so well booked. So, um, but the DQs... New Japan DQs are, are, are almost always terrible. Here's a full lineup for the pay-per-view. We've got, for the buy-in, Serena Deeb versus Riho for the NWA Women's World title. We've got the Casino Battle Royal, and the winner of that gets a future title match with a mystery person. We've got Cody Rhodes, Anthony Agogo, Hagman Page, Brian Cage, Sting and Darby versus Scorpio Sky and Ethan Page, Miro versus Lance Archer, Pinnacle versus Inner Circle in the Stadium Stampede, Karshida versus Britt Baker for the women's title. Young Bucks versus Moxley and Kingston for the tag team titles. And Kenny Omega, Pac, and Orange Cassidy three-way for the AEW world title, which apparently is WWE rules. That's, yeah, yeah, I know that. Don't like it. But actually, I won't like it if they actually do that shitty finish. If Kenny Omega beats somebody to retain the title, that's all right. Yeah, but don't you think that it's, you know, I, I mean, yeah, I hope the, the finish I hope they don't do is Orange Cassidy has Pac beaten and Kenny throws Orange out of the ring and pins Pac. I hope that's not the finish. We could but do without that. But there's a good chance that there's, there, it wouldn't surprise me if it is either. My big issue is, is uh, and I, I mentioned this with other things, like the rules are that you can be DQ'd, but they just never DQ anybody. Yeah. So the rules here are that Pac could pin Orange Cassidy to win Omega's title. Yes. Like, those can be the rules, but they don't ever have to do that. I hope they never do that. Yes. Because doing that would, would really cheapen the championship. Yes. I would prefer if three ways were just elimination rules, and then you don't have to worry about it. Like, yeah. the only way that Omega loses yeah, yeah, the title I mean, it, is if he is beaten. If you have an elimination rules, at least the champion loses. Yes, which makes it so much better, and it and it doesn't cheap. It doesn't. You know what? That doesn't even. It. it I think it does cheapen the title to put it in three ways. But at least, like, it, if the champion loses his title without being beaten, I think that just makes the whole title a joke. You know. So yeah. So it but, doesn't it doesn't cheap it that much if 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 Omega has to be beaten by yeah, either Pac or Orange Cassidy. Yeah. To lose his title. Then that doesn't cheapen the title. Somebody beat him one on like they beat him one yeah, on it's still, one. It's, it's still not it's still not a singles match, you know. But but it's it's a lot better than the other way for sure. Yeah. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got twelve thousand episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website wrestlingobserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The twelve to eighteen new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.